I've not seen such bravery. We all love video games, right? Right? But what's cooler than a video game? How about a video game inside of a video game? Mini games are great. Sometimes. Sometimes they're awful. But this list will be focusing on the good ones. I will, however, be excluding minigame compilation games, so no Mario Party, WarioWare, or anything like that. But with that said, here are my personal top five minigames. It's really easy to get distracted from the main story in Grand Theft Auto. Hell, it's easy to get distracted from any objective in Grand Theft Auto. I actually got tired of GTA 4 without getting very far, because all I wanted to do was drive around and shoot people. And after a long day of criminal activity, it's nice to unwind with a great game of bowling. Ah, oh, you gotta be kidding me. The bowling minigame in GTA 4 isn't the best bowling game I've ever played, let's just get that out of the way now. The bowling itself is really only interesting for about half of a real game, which is good because you do have the option of playing just half a game. And while the gameplay isn't the best thing in the world, the atmosphere is fantastic. No loading screens or anything like that, you just walk in, pay for a game, and choose a lane. It really is a cool feature and adds some realism to the city. And what's even better than how you enter the bowling alley is how you leave it. When I get a score that I'm not incredibly happy with, nothing calms my anger more than going around and shaking the hand of everyone in the bowling alley. It's nice to know that even after a bad game of bowling, my fellow bowling alley goers will always be there to support me. Animal Crossing is a relaxed game where you can do a lot of things that you could actually be doing in real life. Going fishing, buying wallpaper, doing... this... But sometimes you just want to do something a little more close to home. And what could be more true to life than sitting inside playing video games while you're sitting inside playing video games? The GameCube version of Animal Crossing had a handful of NES titles that could be obtained through various means. These games included Donkey Kong, Excite Bike, Wario's Woods, and more. Some could be won during Tom Nook's lotteries or bought from Red, some came in the form of e-reader cards, and some came from the island. Now, am I allowed to count these full NES titles as minigames? Well, in this context, I feel like I can, and it's my video, so I'm going to. It was just a really neat feature to be able to take a break from this to play some games. And not only could you play your games on the console, but if you connected your Game Boy Advance to your GameCube, it would transfer the game over. Then you could play that NES game anywhere you wanted until you turned off your Game Boy or ran out of batteries. Unfortunately, with the creation of the Virtual Console, the NES games in Animal Crossing weren't featured in any other releases after the GameCube one. It wasn't really a huge loss for the series, but it was a loss nonetheless. I'm sure Animal Crossing fans would be pleased to see this feature return, but I doubt it will ever happen. And so, Rockstar makes another appearance on the list. This time, the minigame is in the Wild Wild Western Red Dead Redemption. As with the bowling of GTA, a lot of the joy of this minigame comes from the atmosphere. After riding my horse through the barren west into this small town, then going into a saloon and doing... other things that cowboys do... something like this... It's time to sit down for a nice game of No Limit Texas Hold'em. It's hard to really make a game of Hold'em unique since there are already rules that have to be followed, but something about sitting down at an already in-progress game of Hold'em in a saloon makes me feel like a total badass. I really love playing Texas Hold'em anyway, so it's already a game that I enjoy. So much so that I don't even bother with all the cheating things you can do, though other people might find that option entertaining. I'd rather just play poker. And what says Texas Hold'em more than getting knocked out with a pair of pocket aces? You know, it turns out that losing in virtual poker is almost as frustrating as losing in real life poker. The difference here is that in this situation, I'm a cowboy, so I can deal with the frustrations a little bit differently.
I'm not the biggest fan of Super Monkey Ball. The idea of rolling around short stages probably made for a good handheld or iPhone game, but I just don't feel like it really worked as a full-fledged console title. The best part of Super Monkey Ball wasn't even the main game. It was a party game called Monkey Target. After rolling down a large ramp and launching off, the goal becomes pretty simple. Land on a target. This ends up being a little difficult, though, because you have to take into account the speed at which you're going, the direction and intensity of the wind, and how far you'll bounce when you hit the ground. You can also fly around and grab bananas before you land, which gives you items that you can use for the next round. Then there's the... <laughs> danger. This provides a chance that there will be hazards during your attempt to land safely on the target, in the form of bombs, spike balls, and clouds. The real fun comes when you get some friends to play with you, as you all strive to safely land your monkey balls. It's a great minigame that I actually find to be much more enjoyable than the main game. And even though it is more fun to play with other people, if you play by yourself, you're always number one. At the time of its release, Sonic Adventure 2 was the bee's knees. It was well received and is generally welcomed as one of the best games to come out on the Dreamcast, and it was one of the highest selling titles on the GameCube. Aside from the entertaining main gameplay, Sonic Adventure 2 featured Chow World, and it was fucking awesome. To first access Chow World, you had to find a Chow Key in a Chow Box. These were scattered throughout the different levels of the main game. Once you've actually gotten to the Chow Garden and very gently hatched the Chow Egg, it's time to start raising it to become the fastest and strongest Chow that's ever lived. Items and animals scattered around the main game can be given to your Chow in order to give them more strength, speed, etc. There is also a Chow Kindergarten where you can take them to be named, drop them off for class, and buy items to give them later. So it's almost like raising your own little kid. Actually, no. It's better than raising a real kid because you can actually race and fight Chows in a battle of the fittest where only one can remain. I mean... I guess you could do that with your own kid. But the fun doesn't stop there. You can put Chows on the Dreamcast VMU and continue to raise and level them, even though you aren't actually near your Dreamcast. You can do the same on the GameCube version using a Game Boy Advance, but the fact that you were actually playing a game to raise your Chow on your memory card is just way too cool. It was like a Tamagotchi that was part of a Sonic game. Unfortunately, the Chow Gardens haven't been included in any other games after Sonic Adventure 2, for whatever reason. But maybe if we wish hard enough, one day we'll be carrying for our chow once again in a future release. Don't worry, buddy. Don't worry, buddy. Don't worry, buddy. Don't worry, buddy. So there you have my top five minigames. But as we all know, my opinion is not the only one out there. So here's Proton John to tell you a little about one of his favorite minigames. Hey, my name is Proton John. I'm a Let's Player, and I'm also in another channel called The Runaway Guys with Chucka Conroy and Nintendo Capri Sun, two fairly well known Let's Players. Brutal Moose asked me to be the guest pick for his top five minigames, and I was excited to do it until I realized I just couldn't say WarioWare and just walk away, so I guess I have to actually think about my response. Now, I had planned on doing an intro using a camera, but my camera sucks. So does the lighting. And kind of everything in this room, really. So here's my choice for top minigame. I'm not that big a fan of Final Fantasy VIII. Between the magic drawing system, Squall's unhealthy obsession with ellipses, and pretty much every character in the game, it never really grabbed me the way previous Final Fantasy games did. It did, however, introduce one of the most addictive minigames in recent memory, the card game Triple Triad. Anytime during the game, you can walk up to an NPC, and if they have a deck of cards, challenge them to a round of Triple Triad. Each player picks five cards from their deck, and takes turns putting them down. Each card has four numbers on it, representing each side of the card. When a card is placed next to a card of a different color, the numbers of the touching sides are compared. If the new card's number is higher, the other card's captured and changes color. After the board is filled, whichever side has captured more cards wins, and is allowed to take a card from the other player to keep. Now, it seems simple at first, but over time the game adds a new rule that change how the game's played. The board could have elemental spaces that add or remove points depending on what cards placed there. Both players could end up being dealt five random cards from their stockpile to play with. The board could allow for combos to let you capture every card on the field, or you could be allowed to take all of your opponent's cards if you win, or lose all yours if you lose. When I played Final Fantasy VIII, I was addicted to this minigame. I ignored whatever I was doing in the main game to play it whenever I could. 
The only time I would get into fights would be to get more cards or to get to the next area of the game so I could play against new people. I had to keep getting new cards because, honestly, I'm horrible at the game and I lost all my good cards way too many times. Thankfully, you can get them back if you keep challenging the same person over and over, but you have to be careful you don't dig yourself into a hole and lose all your cards. Like I did. A lot. If you want to try out Triple Triad for yourself, there are free mobile versions for iOS and Android devices. There are also sites that let you play the game online against other people like Triple Triad Flash Online. Or, if you don't mind that pesky main game getting in the way, I guess you could play Final Fantasy VIII. Oh, sorry John, your voice is just so soothing, I could've dozed off for a little while. Although all these minigames are great, there are bound to be some that I haven't played, that I forgot about, or that just didn't quite make the list. I'd be interested to hear what your top minigames are, so leave me a comment and let me know. But remember, no Mario Party games. That's a different list for a different time. Maybe.